In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly. The time has come again. The champion must die. Union Hall, how are you? Wow. Wow. How's it going, so everybody? Excited. How are you on this cold December night? How's it going? I, you're here for Defend Your Movie Live, everybody. Give it up Thank for Defend you so Your much. Movie Live. Who I'm has gonna, heard the podcast? Who's heard of the podcast? Clap. Ooh! That is now a you're solid... Now you if you haven't, bitch. That, that is a solid three people, I'm pretty sure. That's so great to me and <laughs> now we're going to have loyal listeners forever what your lives are about to change tonight we are the host so excited for you. of a podcast called defend your movie if yes. you don't know what it is because three of you literally clapped your hands <laughs> uh what it is is it, uh, my name is sean donnelly this is my co-host farrah brooke give it up for farrah brooke everybody yes she's so much better than me it's insane I, what happens is we have a friend of ours come on, usually a comedian, and they defend a movie they love that nobody else does, and you guys are at our first live episode right now. Give it up for that. Yes. We're live, baby. So we have, we have a regular podcast planned for you guys, and we also have a couple other things. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you guys excited for the show? What do you say? Yes? I'm very excited. This is a very Brooklyn thing to do, to not do stand-up, just to talk about movies. It's a live podcast. We're just going to, we're going to talk about just the, the filmmaking qualities mm. of Jingle All the Way. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to talk about, what's, what's Ralphie up to now from A Christmas Story? Where is he now? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so the way it goes down, the reason that I have Farrah as my co-host, I started the podcast, I have Farrah as my co-host, because she's literally seen, like, no movies. I haven't seen a movie. So I thought it'd be funny if she was, like, the blank slate of the movie <laughs> podcast. So literally, all right, every time, a running gag on the podcast is that she's never seen, like, a lot of classic movies. So what I'd like to do right now is I'll name a couple of classic movies, and you guys will know that she hasn't seen it, and you'll get horrified. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I have. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. ask you guys to name movies, Sean, and you're going to be I'm gonna fucking be I'm totally Shocked. honest, too. And I have seen some movies. We'll start so. with some big ones. I want to start with one. The Godfather. You know I haven't seen that. <laughs> you know. It's what? horrifying. But okay. I have seen Brent on Broadway 14 times. <laughs> God. It's like I'm of no value here. Was there a Rent movie? Yes, there was. And I saw it at the Zeg... Zigfield? Zigfield Theater? Yeah. Me and my whole family drove into the city well, are to you, see you it. You saw it at the Zigfield? Are you from yeah. 1946? Is that what's happening? <laughs> this is what my mom thought would be the best way. It was like a stadium. I remember this. We drove in as a family. This tells you how fucked up I am. As a family to see this musical about AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> we just... <laughs> That, that was how we rolled. You only strictly... So that movie I saw. You only strictly watch things about AIDS, I'm pretty sure. Right? Then you... Philadelphia and Rent. That's the only two things that you've seen. What's Philadelphia? <laughs> there you go. Philadelphia. There's another one. It's crazy. Have you seen A Christmas Story from back in the day? No. Oh, my God! I'm Jewish, though. Gotcha. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, then. Do Does Jew- it? Don't Jewish people watch Christmas movies, don't yeah, yeah. they? Yeah, they do. What I are don't they, know. As a Jewish girl growing up, what did you think when you watched Christmas movies? You're like, I want to be a part of this? Or were you like, fuck this bullshit? Well, I remember going to my friend Jenna's house to set up her tree and then hysterical crying for two days in a row asking my mom, why does life have to be this way? <laughs> So it was a sensitive subject well, in my apartment. I didn't realize it would get that heavy about a Christmas story. It was about the general Christmas, and I saw it, and I saw what it was, and I knew that it did not work out for me. It's insane how many movies you don't watch, and you just got movie pass, and you still don't even no, watch No, see, now I'm about to be a movie fiend. I'm going to see everything. You like a lot of art house movies. No. Okay, have you seen... What about movies from like my? I'm like way older than Farrah. What about? What about well, Re- let them call us Revenge out. of the Nerds. What about that? No, I haven't seen. All that. right, what is a movie? What's your favorite movie of all time? 
Yeah. Great Seen time. it, yeah. bitch. <laughs> Seen it. Okay. Huh. What was it? Part, mm. of, part of a film class? Yeah. Why did you see it? That's right. I've seen it. <laughs> you like coming of age tales. That's what it is. I have to admit, though, when they came out with the yogurt place 16 handles, I didn't quite get it for a really long time. And when I did get it, it was in front of someone else, and it was very embarrassing. <laughs> um, How did that go down? Were you just like, oh, 16 candles? Yeah, after I'd been there like 40 times. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you know. So we you all go at our own pace. Movies. But here's the thing. there, She's like obsessed. So basically, I just won. What? I won. Any other movies? Do you have a movie? You look like an art house guy. If, why art house? You look like you're here to review this podcast You know, nothing's right more art house. We're in Park Slope on a Saturday night recording a live movie <laughs> podcast. Yeah. This is way is hipper. That... I'm almost 40. This is way hipper than I am. <laughs> I look like I should be fixing almost this microphone. Almost meaning in three weeks. What you say? 40. Uh, no, yeah, almost 40. In May, I'll be 40. Yeah. That's yeah, please don't, please don't. That's ageism, Farah. Please don't be an ageist. What would you right. say? 38? 78, baby! Ooh. What's up now, motherfucker? <laughs> How about you, What's Siskel? It? Give us a movie. There we go. Do you have a movie? Edward Scissorhands. Edward Have you seen it? No. That's fucked up! I haven't. That even- I want to, though. I know what it is. There's scissors and Johnny Depp. <laughs> okay? And it looks good. It looks that is, good. That is officially not knowing what it is. Is that not, is it she not Johnny Depp? I know Depp? what it is. There's scissors and Johnny Depp. That's what it is. It is Johnny, right? That's like being like, there's, there's right. Marlon Brando and there's Italian food. That's what, the, that's what Godfather is. But Johnny Depp's in it, right? Johnny Depp's in it, yes. He is Edward Scissorhands. In a breakout role. If you... <laughs> In a cutout role. Yes or no? If you had to guess what Edward Scissorhands is about, what would you say it's about? A troubled man with scissor hands. <laughs> <laughs> and he's only good at haircuts, and nobody values him for anything but haircuts. Oh, so you do know it. That's it? Yes. There's a part where he's really good. I thought everyone was going to laugh at me with the haircuts thing. No, there's a whole scene where he cuts all the women in the neighborhood's hair. And he's really good at it. That's but crazy. it's not Sweeney Todd. No. Because that like, I've fucking seen, okay? You're very Sweeney, Broadway-ish. Sweeney, Sweeney. You're a, it's like a poor man's Sweeney Todd. That's what it is. It sounds great. It's awesome. I'm in. And you should have watched it. You would have loved it. All right. Anything else to make one me feel more, terrible about myself? One more, and then myself? we'll talk about something else. What, give me one. The guy who's frowning right now. Give me that. It's Okay. It's your face. <laughs> he loves, he's a director of Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> What'd you say? Adaptation. Adaptation. Good pick, dude. Great movie. Have you seen it? I haven't even heard of it. Oh, my God. Shouldn't, we should murder her right now. That's is insane. it about Adam's, murder? I don't no, it's not we're... about murder. Actually, it is about murder. It is. It it's is? a really good well, movie. Well, it sounds like it's about a writer who's adapting something. <laughs> um, probably a book into a movie, and it's his journey uh, through that, and then somebody dies. No. No? It's about Charlie Kaufman, the writer, and it's about him adapting a book, and then him writing himself into the adaptation to the, screen, the screenplay of his book, of the book. That's pretty much what it is, right? Wouldn't you say? What Honestly, you say, a right? little less convincing than the scissors with the haircut, his hands. <laughs> But well, it's a little it's a little more tougher to get. It's a little tougher to get. All right. There is hold on though. Oh. There is one movie that you love. Yeah, yeah, there is. And what's it Wait. called? Do you want to tell everybody? Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, who's seen it? <laughs> Who is Louder so I know. Glad you seen Moana. It's it such a good movie. It is the movie of the century. It really is. All the critics are talking about it. It's so good. What happened to our screen? I don't know. Can we bring the screen up? There we oh, go. Okay. So what happened? You want to explain the whole story? Go ahead. Explain it. Okay. So, well, it starts basically, I saw Moana. It came out last year around this time, and we were just starting to work on the podcast together. And I was like, whoa, you have to see this. Sean finally saw it. We do these episodes called Sean Finally Sees It, Farrah Finally Sees It, where we see the movies, mostly me. But 
There's <laughs> a longer list. So sure. anyway, Sean saw Moana, and it was a big reveal that he did love it, as anyone who's seen it it's a really does feel. It's f- it's amazing, but you've seen it And I was listening to the soundtrack on the way over here, and it's honestly super inspiring. <laughs> and I, it is. And I wanted to play it under, but we couldn't quite get it together for that. But really listen to the songs, and not just the ones with words or anything <laughs> all the music is it's like if you're on the subway you have moana in your headphone oh farrah is straight. jewish long island moana that's what she thinks well i am from an island <laughs> so i i do relate to this movie so, so anyway something very exciting happened to me uh, last Sunday, basically this movie. But before movie- that, you you wrote a, a note before this. You almost willed it to happen. Well, anyway, the movie turned me on to some of you may know him as The Rock, <laughs> also known as Dwayne Johnson. I had never really been familiar with his work before this, so Moana was my introduction. I understand he does have a lot of stuff before, and I will be catching up as quickly as possible, <laughs> but. A She's man. not kidding. She didn't know who the fucking Rock was. I knew who he was. I just didn't know how special he was. Okay? <laughs> I didn't know how influential he could be. Anyway, so I started following him, him on Instagram, and it totally has changed my life completely. And just watch. Let's just go through it. So basically, I want to set up what happened Sunday. Can you move back a little more? Yes. Thank you. So Sunday, I'm coming back from Thanksgiving. I'm on the train, the LIRR, and I'm coming back and I'm thinking, you know, wow. The world is bad. The world is bad. There's cancer. There's flooding. There's Harvey. There's, uh, Olives are disgusting. Wait, Please stop it. Why, wait, hold on. That ISIS graphics looks like a POD cover band. <laughs> graphic there's the real housewives you know the world is bad the world is bad (laughs) it's it's not we're not happy about it okay that's how i was feeling and i was thinking you know we really in these troubling times need to hold on to whatever last bit of positivity we can what emoji is that sad yeah something like that sean okay i've never seen movies sean's never seen emojis (laughs) We're catching up. I'm too old for emojis. <laughs> so then I thought, you know what's good? Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. He's great. He's really good. <laughs> we really like him. He does good He's saving things. that woman. I don't know what this was. It needed a full screen. <laughs> Whose feet are that? That's a, that's a fetish video. That's what that is. I mean, man of the century. Some people are saying it. <laughs> The Rock. Give it up for The Rock, please. I just... He's... Oh, wow. That's pretty bro. The Rock hugging a rock? I think that's too much even for it's, The Rock. It's never too much. <laughs> so basically, November 23rd, 2016, that is my parents' anniversary. The release date of the movie, Moana. <laughs> my dead cat's birthday. No lie. really is buddy forever so this is when moana came out i didn't know we were going to talk about it so much i was basically just going to describe what an influential movie it was and how important it was and how beautiful it was the water i saw it four times four times in the theater the first time regular and then i didn't realize you have to see it in 3d i mean because of the water i'm not that into 3d movies or movies but the water was amazing this is us, Robert Dean, who will have other little pieces in the show, made this graphic. Yes. Oh, th- who knew? Great. <laughs> I don't need this. So, I follow The Rock on Instagram. Show you guys this view. It is spectacular of one of my favorite <laughs> cities in the world, Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> And look, I've dropped my blood and sweat in this city, wrestled multiple matches in this city, shot big movies in this city. But one thing that a lot of people don't know that I want to share with you guys is when I was 22 years old, I came to this city for the first time. I was playing in the Canadian Football League, playing my first pro football game. I was playing for the Calgary Stampeders. We were playing the BC Lions. I was so excited. Two days later, I got cut. 
<laughs> the dream shattered, sent home with seven bucks in my pocket. I was like, wait, no, I got to play in the NFL eventually. Those are my big goals. That's my dream. You realize that, that playing in the NFL was the best thing that never happened because it got me here. So my point is, look, you're going to get your ass kicked. We're going to get the shit kicked out of us. You got to get up. You got to have faith that the one thing you wanted to happen <laughs> oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. So have faith. Oh, just okay. keep that in mind. So his That's whole just, Instagram is like these inspirational videos. Is that he's just also... a commercial for ballers? Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> he, it's, he's very, like, he posts his inspiration. He works out a lot. He, he like, visits kids with cancer. It's, it's good. It's really, it's nice. Okay. So basically, I want to bring your attention to, on August 29th, 2017, I didn't want to alter this or anything because this is real. That was this past August. This is after I've really, you know, gotten into Dwayne. And I wrote this in my phone at 5.48 p.m. And I didn't want to alter it at all. And I actually, you know, whatever. So you want to read it, Sean? You want me to read it? Yeah. But don't, I didn't, I'm a little embarrassed. Okay, you guys ready? Dear The Rock, I just started following your Instagram, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. (laughs) Your ability to tap into raw sexuality, a comfortable, (laughs) casual perfection, a mountain to my river that flows around your glowing neck. Your neck orb is quite wonderful. Oh, your thick Thick orb. orb It's important. Sorry. You're more than just a meat stick. How are you insulting Look, this him? This week, and- a boy saved his drowning brother's life thanks to his obsession with you in the movie San Andreas. Now, I have to admit, I've never seen or heard of San Andreas, but I'll be getting to it, believe you me. I still haven't gotten to it. What I've seen you in is, is Moana. Moana. It was my introduction to your work, and I was astonished by the warmth and charisma in your voice. This is, this is 40 minutes, guys. I wouldn't necessarily call you a good singer. You're such a dick. What the fuck? <laughs> but you, you do it anyway with such passion that what I love about your thick, throbbing personality. Your character of Maui guided Moana to her... I didn't realize how long this would be. Her destination, <laughs> which is exactly how I see the relationship between you and I. You constantly post inspirational videos on Instagram, and I don't know how I live without them up until two weeks ago. Life before your videos was meaningless. Monday was just Monday, not motivational Monday. Not motivational at all. You invited the boy who saved his brother's life in, the name, in your name to your movie set so you could spend time with him on someone else's dime and I really respect that you offered him all the candy he wanted from the craft services paid for by Warner Brothers I see you on Instagram with your beautiful daughter you are such a good father and you are such a good man and you are such I don't know what happened there the love you have okay whatever The Rock you have 92 million now 96.4 million really take that in okay that's no, that's really crazy. Followers, so I know I'm just a random sea, a raindrop, ra- a in, raindrop the in the sea that surrounds your life. But I'm so happy to be a small piece, a microscopic peck on the rock that holds the key to my heart. So rock, paper, scissors with me, baby. <laughs> See you on the gram. <laughs> All right. I'm worried about Farrah, guys. So basically, now let's bring it to present day, Sunday. Which is not present day. November 26th. (laughs) Sean. (laughs) 2017. Okay. I tweeted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I tweeted. I hope I... I haven't really, like, gone over this myself yet. It was only Sunday. I hope The Rock had a great weekend. And I did. You know? I was on the train, and I did hope. I hope The Rock had a great weekend. My friend Alex said he did. You know he did. And I was like, yeah, I bet it was fucking great. (laughs) Ah! Whoa! (laughs) Check it out! (laughs) Victory, Farrah! I'm sweating. I'm sweating. He said my fucking name. Okay? (laughs) He tweeted... For the listeners at home, he tweeted back, I'm in Hawaii, and it was fucking awesome, Farah. BTW, very considerate of you to hope I had a great weekend. Rare of Twitter these days. Hope you did too. Aloha. Aloha. With a hang ten hand on the end. Oh, my God, so good. I did. T- I thought of a million things I could say back to this. <laughs> I have to tell you. I almost posted the screen grabs of the 
sweater. I was thinking of things. But then I, I really felt, you know what? Be cool. Because that's how this started, right? Be cool. So I just went with, you know, a nice thing. I did, too, a wonderful weekend with the fam. So thankful for you. Get it in there, but don't. Wishing you a great holiday season. I just wanted to be... I wanted to respect his time. <laughs> you won! Okay? It's just so amazing. That's if you've amazing. ever heard the song by Destiny's Child, Say My Name. <laughs> I, it, there's, I, I, I'm, I'm still in awe. <laughs> Basically, the reception on Facebook. <laughs> this is my greatest accomplishment. 900 likes! This is my... This got more than when I got engaged. This is, <laughs> this is out of control. This is better than a late night set. Okay, in between sets... Where do I go from out, here? As I often do in between sets, this I slide is... into your comment section nice and smooth <laughs> in a very non-creepy way. I read your comments just so we can stay connected, and I always know what's on your mind, and I can address it. <laughs> so somebody just asked me a cool question and said, DJ, you're on top. Where could you possibly Basically, go from I'm here? Basically, I'm on top. You Where can I go? Working your competition. Who's your competition? It's a great question. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on top, but anytime you reach the top, you always want to make sure that you, you have the desire to raise the bar and take the brass ring. This to is the same it's never video. Been. That's the key to being on Wait, top. Listen, Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And in terms of competition, Why like a great question. Everyone's my competition, but a fundamental key that I've learned over the years is, and I'll share it with you, my number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. you got to be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. Yeah! You versus you, baby! You versus you! Give it up for fair, everybody. Wow. She's achieved the mountaintop. Now it's That's... just me versus me. <laughs> All right, watch out. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy. Are you ready to get the show started? What do you say? Yes? Come on. It's going great. You guys, we have a, for our first section, we have a really fun so idea. Excited. It's called Dreamcast, where we recast a movie that everybody loves. What do you say? You're into it? What do you do? Yeah? And to join us, to help us out, the person who recast the movie, she's so hilarious. You know her from everything. Give it up for Aparna on Chandler, everybody. Yay! Come on for Aparna. Yes! Let's sit. We're gonna have, you want to sit in the middle? Go ahead, sit in the middle of Parna. How are you? Grab your microphone. It's good to see you. Guys, give it up for a Oh, here. hi! That was so, so exciting, what just Let me happened. get the list here, and we're going to do this. Aparna oh, did us a favor, and she recasted the movie Home Alone. How many yeah. of you guys know... The movie it's Home Alone. It's one of my faves. <laughs> and also, did you find it hard to recast this movie? Or like, what well, was your... I feel like you. Whenever you do a, a recast or a reboot, you have to have like sort of a point of view, or like an you know, you have to have an overall idea of it's like what, how is this going to be different? But you knew the movie already. Yeah, I've only seen, I've seen two it. movies. <laughs> Home is that Alone. True? What movie was the other one? And Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> And, that's and that was the two movies you gave me that you wanted yeah. to recast, possibly. I, I'm like you, Farah. I haven't seen anything. Oh. What do you do? Watch, listen to NPR all day? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I listen to NPR. I watch well. NPR all day. You do? <laughs> I just stare, stare at, at the radio. radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sean, stare at the app on your phone? We listen to podcasts. We listen to this podcast. Yeah. Oh, my so God. You're do. so woke. <laughs> I don't understand anything you say. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Wait, woke is a thing, isn't it? Yeah, right. What a real phrase. Okay, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But okay, take it easy. I did enjoy when you asked what what if that was the sad face emoji. (laughs) Yeah, I knew it was. I was just trying to be funny. I I'm very emoji. I'm I'm savvy. I'm emoji emoji savvy. I use emojis all the time. It's true. I love the koala emoji. I use that the most. And what about your new phone? Mm. Oh, I have an iPhone. This isn't it, but I have an iPhone 10. So I'm ahead of. I'm much. The, I'm the wokest, so that's okay. They don't know, but I'm. I'm the wokest. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so let's get started. Let's do. Okay. This is a Parna's reboot of the movie Home Alone. Are you guys ready for this? 
We're going to start off with the main guy, the main kid, the okay, main dude. Okay. So we did – hold on. Don't show it yet. We're going to do – Oh, it's there. <laughs> Kevin McAllister. Kevin McAllister will now be so, played by a baby chick. No. You, by um, <laughs> by <laughs> when's the name? Wow. So it was originally played this. by – It was played by Macaulay Culkin originally, yeah. and he did a bang-up job. And he then he did. kind of lost it and joined a band that was kind of weird, and then that was it pretty much. She's amazing though because I did see the movie she was in. She was in The Beast of the Southern Wild. So yeah, you think she would movie. be a good a good uh, Kevin McAllister? Yeah. Why, and why, why is that? Because she's good at putting stuff up on her face? <laughs> yes. Because she's good at answering the phone no matter what's in her hand. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just, I, you know, I think she's a dynamic and engaging performer. But is it? Yeah. Agreed. How old is she now? Because that movie was like ten years ago. Yeah, but I think she's still in her tweens. She's in her tweens. Yeah. So she could play. Yeah. What would her name? Would it be like? What would her name? Kelly. Be? Kelly McAllister. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You thought about yeah, it. I did. Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Or it could be Kevin. I don't know. It could be Kevon. I don't know. It Kevon. Could be, yeah. You don't even right, have to change little, it. Okay. I see how you're doing it. Mm-hmm. All right. Not bad. Uh, we're going to go to the next name here. Harry Lime, who was played originally by Joe Pesci. I did not know that was his name. I didn't know it either. I knew it was Harry. But I knew it was Harry, it's... but no one. How do you I don't spell Lime? Ever... L-I-M-E. Like the, no. um... So it could be a L-Y-M-E. Excuse like the me. Fruit. I don't Like Lyme disease? I doubt that. No. I don't even know. I don't think he's been. <laughs> I don't think they. I don't think they ever use the name right, Lime well, in the movie. That is the <laughs> most reveal. interesting photo of Leslie Jones <laughs> Wait, that, I don't even think that that's you Leslie went Jones. with. Let's I, be clear, like Robert was, Dean well, again on the uh, picture Jones, animations, it's everyone. Leslie Jones as Samuel L. Jackson, <laughs> which is such an interesting choice. I get why he did it, because the hat. It's like a, he's trying to... <laughs> I guess it's so. Like, oh, they both have a black hat. I don't see why. All right, what's next? <laughs> so do you want to talk about your pick of Leslie Jones? I just I, I went in sort of a, a female reboot direction for the whole movie and I thought her energy would be good for you, Joe Pesci. Would you put her in all the Joe Pesci roles? Like even Tommy from Goodfellas? Yeah, why not? Where she's like, You think I'm funny? Yeah. Funny how I think she'd be great. <laughs> I've met her in person, she's a terrifying person. She is, but she's I very love ten- it. intense. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next we have Mary uh, Marv Merchants, who well, I didn't Marv know his last Merchants. name was Merchants either. They really and didn't. originally it was played by the lovely Daniel Stern. Mm-hmm. And your pick My for pick. Marv Merchants because you did you switched it up I was went, Martha Kelly. I went in a different direction for this one. You did. I it wanted sort baskets. of a quiet, brooding energy for this part. <laughs> I don't know you if anyone have... watches Baskets, but I just feel like her sort of neurotic like apologism would just be great to play off of Jones's loud possess. I think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> loud possess. So we, do, we both don't watch movies, but we do watch Baskets. We do. <laughs> Which is a great show. Yeah. I highly Baskets recommend. is amazing. It's so I love good. It. She's awesome. She's, she's amazing. I do she's watch amazing. TV. TV is cool with me. But not movies. Not yet. Well, movie pass. Because is, isn't he the, always the one driving in the, in the movie? And I just, whenever the scenes with her and Zach Galifianakis and she's driving, they're just so funny. Oh, oh. They are. all right. Then you put some thought I that. really put a lot of thought into this when I um, decided two you hours ago. You can't go wrong. Then, you can't go wrong with Martha Kelly. She's hilarious. No, she's so good. Good pick. What do you guys think of Martha Kelly is? Does everyone know? Martha Kelly's they work, do, you should. If they were not psyched about that pick. I think I don't think she's done a lot of film, but I think it's only a matter of time. Okay. And the next one is Peter McAllister, who's like who's played by one of my favorite character actors of all time, this guy John Hurt. Oh, he's so good. Who literally like his like he was like he's a great actor, but his life was like a mess. He tried to like kill his ex wife and stuff, like all this really? crazy. And then he died when he was like fifty something. He's a really tragic character, but he's an amazing character actor. So you went a little bit different with John I Hurt. Did. Uh, let's bring it up. I Wanda told you. Sykes. <laughs> I told you. I, told I you. see a pattern forming in your reboot. I, I did. I Hashtag wanted, me too. I, uh, I wanted to do a female reboot and really go all the way with it. You want to? I <laughs> love it. Even where the father of the family <laughs> is Wait, played yeah. by Wanda Sykes. Well, I think we live in a world where father is not limited by gender. I. Th- <laughs> I didn't know how much sperm Wanda Sykes has inside of her. Okay, that was kind of fucking creepy I said that. I, so much sperm. This is becoming a very woke It's list. very woke. A very woke. Now I agree. Okay. 
So Wanda Sykes, what went in your thought process there? You were like, I don't think it should be constricted by gender. Well, this was more like who I wanted the her, um, her parents to be lesbians, and so I wanted a good um, duo. So she's really funny, and then I I don't even remember who I picked for. I that know one. I have it here. We're gonna do it in a second. Hold on. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah, that is the, that's the <laughs> old guy. I don't know where you got this. Actually, I kind of get this. Yeah, the, also, o- the old guy Whoopi with... Whoopi Goldberg looks like she's in the Matrix in this picture. These photo selections are... I, I think a lot of thought went into them. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? You're like, who could play like a sadder character? And you're well, talking. also just someone with a lesson to impart. A less what? Like a lesson to impart. Because remember, he's like oh. scary, but then he's like, I'm not so bad. Yeah. I um, love Whoopi. And I got to call my son. So I feel like she could do justice to someone who's like misunderstood, but then she's like. And she'd throw a couple of childs in there. Yeah. She'd be like, child, mm-hmm. you got to stop. <laughs> I mean, That's my Whoopi sure, Goldberg but. Mainly Whoopi Whoopi Goldberg. Goldberg. Just Child. a little more insight on my family. We did have a framed picture of Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, yeah. She's very important in my family. We did. You're learning a I lot think about that's great. Like, oh, thank you. How are you guys not losing your minds? <laughs> what did you hear what she said? Because it's reasonable. Anybody else? <laughs> no, nobody no. else. No, not even Whoopi Goldberg's family has that. I bet they do. <laughs> I bet they do. Most people are like, hey, we had, a, we had a frame picture of the Pope. We had a frame picture of our grandparents. You're like, we had Whoopi Goldberg. Was it from I had a very Relief in 93? It was an untraditional upbringing. No, I love, I love that. <laughs> I once asked my mom if she believed in God. She said, no, but I believe in aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's really funny. That's what's happening. All right, here, here we go. So we got old man Marley. He went for Whoopi Goldberg. Okay, Robert. Ro- Robert oh. Blossom was the other guy. That's Robert Blossom. I think, like okay, here we go. Know. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. So and then Tiffany Haddish is. The, I feel like um, this is a very pandering pick that you gave. What? She well, know. she is She's having so a moment. Right She's hilarious. I but love her. That is how Hollywood casts movies. Kate McAllister, who's played by Catherine O'Hara, who's amazing. Who's so and then good. you went Tiffany Haddish. I think that that works. I think really Tiffany well. Haddish. So and Wanda Tiffany Haddish would be, would be married. To Wanda Sykes in this yeah. movie. Yeah. Yes. I think they would yes. be funny energies to play this off. This is of the each most other. Brooklyn list I've ever heard of in my life. Because <laughs> they're all black? What is have... happening? I'm kidding around. That was a very good pick. Tiffany Haddish is unbelievable. She's, She's so great. Good. So good we saw to Girls the... Trip together. That's what you we did. Ah, I just remember. She carries the whole movie, Me and Tiffany Sean Haddish. went and saw it together. Here we go, and then we got. We're gonna go down. We're gonna go down, not to this one, because we don't know. <laughs> Let's just oh. continue through the pictures. I want it. Hold on, there we go. We got Buzz, <laughs> Buzz McAllister. I really, it was. I really swung. I really swung wide. I really swung wide on some of these. Um, Hold on, Buzz. Can you go back to Buzz? I uh, Buzz, you played. Buzz, Buzz is played by uh, Kendall, Kendall Jenner. Jenner. <laughs> I know it's a little bit of typecasting, <laughs> but... He was played um, by... Originally, he was played by Devin Ratray, and now you want Kendall Jenner to play... What does he say? What's his famous line on it again? He goes, um, well, what you did, you little asshole. Little jerk. You little jerk. Nope. Is that him, though? No, 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 that's not him. That's not him that says... Oh, that's the I uncle that says it. We'll get to the uncle in a second. But I do I think know. everyone... Here we go, Uncle Frank. You uncle Frank Kenan is Thompson. Kenan Thompson. This actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I could see Kenan Thompson. And also, here we go. Megan oh, yeah. McAllister, Hillary Wolf, played by um, Amanda uh, Stenberg. Yes. All right, cool. And John Candy. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I thought that would be great. That's a re- That's actually a really great pick. Yeah. Those are two of my favorite people. Here we go. It's going so fast. Hold on, hold on. Did you Pause know? It for a oh second. my god. It's Pause me. it. The next one we got Pause. is let's go to Officer. Ba, 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 ba. I couldn't even remember who this guy was. I, don't know. I mean, now I'm questioning if I've seen this movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't think I've seen it. Now you're messing up. <laughs> I think I saw clips. Well, he, well, yeah. Well, wow. you remember John Candy? He had the polka band. The crazy part about not it is so that much, you, you honestly. literally it's not you went about. all the way down mm. to you. I asked you to recast the movie. The funniest part about it is you I covered went. Man in Airport. Well, <laughs> man, man in Airport came up uh, man, sooner than I expected. You went. It was originally. Oh, that guy. Look. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> She put Pete as I, I thought Rihanna. Would, I thought it would just be fun to really have a who's who <laughs> of McAllister's. The McAllister, that's the cousin. I forgot his name. And then you went to oh, that one. You can keep going. Keep going. 
That girl. I don't know. There's a lot of like this. Everybody looks These so bad. Great. That's the guy who says, "Who's gonna feed your Who's gonna feed your tarantula while you're gone?" Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> that's the kid that peed in the bed. That's, that's a perfect pick. Who's a culkin? And they kind of look related. A, to be it honest, it seems like a good breakout role for Blue Ivy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Blue Ivy. I can't believe they didn't cast her in the upcoming Lion King. Which, let me tell you, I will be there. Are you- at the new Lion King. I know. All When's right. it coming out? Featuring next year. I can't oh. wait. Okay, that's it. That's, that's, that really went Oh, those, are, so those are the picture so ones. that's it for your picks. Thank that you. was great. Yeah, wow. that's my picks. Very good job. Thanks, guys. And your thought process was like, let me just get a 2017 version of this movie going. I wanted to do something that spoke to the moment we're in, politically and emotionally. <laughs> 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 Aparna Nanchela, everybody. Give it up for Aparna. Yay. Thank you so much. You're the best. I she love it. it. I love her vision because I just feel like people get so upset, like the female Ghostbusters or the female this, like just start fucking yeah. with them. She's totally. like, everybody's a female lesbian. Female home alone or like, I don't know. I want to fuck with the <laughs> trolls, man, and tell them that there's an all-female reboot of... Well, since I don't know movies, this is a hard line to finish. But what's the one with Mel Gibson and the Jesus thing? Is Passion Mary, of the Christ. Do you know you're even in a show right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's I'm like, saying all-female reboot. She's like, what was that movie with the guy Because I don't the know thing? that movie. This is the thing. All right. Has it become apparent we're both from Long Island yet? <laughs> Come on. It's on. a thing. You know, with the movies. Let's move to our next section. Oh. We have uh-huh. our friend... Robert Dean, who uh, literally is doing a lot of tech stuff for the show, he has a video he's going to show. Oh, here he is. Everybody give it up for Robert Dean. There we go. Oh. He just kind of came out. Oh, hi, everybody. Hi. So why don't am... you uh, explain what's going on, Robert? Um, so I am a soldier in the war on Christmas. <laughs> but I'm on the anti-Christmas side. I think we shouldn't say Merry Christmas. I don't even think we should say Happy Holidays. I think we all should just say winter at each other. I think that's what we should do. I agree. Somebody said, Jesus, don't say that. Don't say that. Winter? Winter. That's how we'll deal with December. <laughs> so in the, on that note, I decided to take the movie The Santa Claus with Tim Allen and remove every, re- every reference to Christmas and Santa Claus in it. <laughs> I want to say I apologize for what resulted in that. <laughs> Are you guys ready for it? What do you say? Are you ready for this? Lower the, lower the lights a little bit. And what do you call it? It's called the claws. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here's the claws. What have you been telling him? I had this really strange dream. <laughs> Normally I sleep naked, buck naked. What was the last thing you and Charlie did? Some shots of brown liquor? I know what happened. How do you know that? How? You don't have any proof. I know who you are. Charlie, you're wrong. I was three. <laughs> and it was an Oscar Mayer weenie whistle. Sometimes some things, big things, should remain un- unsaid. People... Oh, you mean like a secret. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like a secret. You're, you're falling apart. I know. In the best interest of the child, all of your visitation rights are suspended. It makes me want to... Lash out irrationally. Don't make me beat you up. Do you have any concept of how dangerous this is? Where'd he go? Is this the most current photo you have? Charlie! <laughs> I'm in big trouble. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Give it the claws, everybody. Let's hear it. I think think what we learned is uh, sometimes you need a little Christmas. (laughs) Thank you. Give it up for Robert Dean, everybody. Yes. And now to the meat of the meat and potatoes of the podcast. Let's go on a podcast, baby. It's time to defend a movie. What do you guys say? Yes. 
Oh, my God. We have an awesome guest for you guys. You know him from Conan. You know him from, from his half-hour special on Comedy Central. He's taping a new half-hour for Comedy Central. Give it up for Mike Lawrence, everybody. Let's hear it for Mike. Yes. Oh, man. I, I look like every person that would write angry YouTube comments about Aparna's remake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's happening to America? <laughs> No, I think it's important to show that black lesbian parents can be negligible to their children, too. It, that is progress. They fuck up sometimes. How did they not know the kid was in the van? Still bothered me 27 years later. Just look back. There, end of movie. Um, <laughs> Do you know how many Seinfeld plots get solved by cell phones? Yeah. <laughs> They just do it. That's part of the movie. Man. Or just uh, black lesbians uh, being like, Kramer, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> George, hug your mom. <laughs> so uh, we were trying to figure out what movie for you to defend. Yeah. You picked a very bold choice, my friend. Yeah. Do it, you want to tell it, everybody what movie you picked? In case, uh, just to let the listeners know, I, I am a nerd. I'm literally wearing a T-shirt that mansplains the abilities of the Infinity Gems. That's right, gems, not stones. <laughs> uh, and uh, I have seen every single superhero movie. I watched Elektra on my birthday alone as if... There was another way. Uh, and I am defending the 1997 Joel Schumacher classic, Batman Ampersand Robin. <laughs> what a piece of shit movie. <laughs> I haven't this, seen it. I have to tell you, I was somewhere before this, and I said this was the movie being defended, and the person I was with said, that's a pretty good movie. Uh, no. <laughs> were you, were I, know, you, I said, do were most you, people were you think that? you hang out with the devil? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Wait you're devil. friends with Joel no, Schumacher? <laughs> <laughs> which, which I want to say before we start, he apologized for this movie. Fuck you, Joel. Never apologize for your art. Never <laughs> apologize. You know what you Even did, when it's bad. And some of us love it. To call this art is like calling the Real Housewives like film. That's like the same. <laughs> it's television. Type no of one's vibe. ever called it film. <laughs> All right, get ready. Stop poking holes in my stupid yeah. jokes. <laughs> the audience said bravo to that. <laughs> oh. oh, come on! By the so way, you... just to wrap everything up, uh, Home Alone, directed by Christopher Columbus, who also in 2005 did Rent. Ah. Yeah. Wait, Christopher Columbus? Yes, he's the a director. director. Yeah. I Not... heard that name before. Yeah. His production company is 1492 Farrah... Films, and he did the first two Harry Potters. Yes, I have some type of autism. Farrah thinks. <laughs> you think it's the actual Christopher Columbus, don't you? <laughs> I just, it sounded funny. I'm going to make a movie You're about like... the kids with the AIDS. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> I thought he was maybe fucking with She's me. like, down with Christopher Columbus. He had AIDS and directed this movie. <laughs> you <laughs> thought Manifest Destiny Slaves. was the worst thing he did. Well, you haven't seen Rent. Uh, <laughs> Okay. It wasn't a good movie, by the way. No. So you, but then it wasn't a good movie. Joel Schumacher is the well, director of yes. this movie. Visionary. I'd like visionary what? He is a visionary. He like. is not a visionary. <laughs> he is. did. Here's the thing about Joel Schumacher. He did like Saint Almost Fire. He did a bunch Has of he done 80s movies. I've seen? Did you see Saint Almost yeah. Fire? No. Did you see God, Batman he... and Robin? No. He then did no. Falling Down with Michael Douglas. He I, did it falling down. I think he might have done Lost Boys. I and think then, he might have. And then he hit his head and he did Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. <laughs> this is insane that this guy went from those movies to this movie. He didn't hit his head and do Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. He took a cock out of his mouth and then did Batman Forever <laughs> and Batman and Robin. Whoa! <laughs> so here's the thing. This movie... <laughs> It's bad for even a bad... Like, here's the thing. Nothing compares... As much as people hate the DC movies now, like Batman uh, versus Superman and all that, nothing is as bad as these movies. This and movie. that is my main defense of it. It's it, main defense? I think that this movie is better than Batman versus Superman. No. No. I... <laughs> Nay, I say. No, for the no, 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 I'm we going have harder. Someone with a standing ovation, <laughs> which is just me if I shaved. But I will say even better: this film is better than Dark Knight Rises. It is. No, it said it. No one was shot in the hold theater. On, come on. Oh, and Batman doesn't stop being Slash Batman. Down. You got it. Hold on. Now we're gonna have you back up that hypothesis. You're damn fucking right. I will. Okay, go for it. 
Okay, Batman <laughs> does not kill anybody in this film. He does not go against his morality. He does not quit, which Batman's only superpower, which he says in the Justice League episode, <laughs> Dreams of Destiny, I never quit. He does that in the Nolan films. He doesn't do that in this. He perseveres. He finds a way to fight overpowerful villains and wins at the end of the day <laughs> while never breaking his moral code. Oh, I'm having Mike. <laughs> this is the perfect death ever. Having Mike on the show is like having the fat comic book guy from The Simpsons on the yeah. show. <laughs> this is the episode that women can watch when they're like, my vagina's too wet and I need to dry it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it so, honors the works of Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Here's um, the thing. Dark Knight Rises, he does not kill anybody. He kills the legend of Batman by quitting. Batman can never quit. Oh. It is the one thing he can't do. But he gets do, back into it. Him. He goes back into It ends time. with him at a fucking... Oh, oh but at the end end. Yeah. yeah, it starts with him having been... Uh, not Batman for eight years and then ends with him not being Batman again. Okay, now I'm not as much of a comic book guy as you are. But no one is. It, right. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Lee isn't. <laughs> but let me ask you I this. I concede. <laughs> let me ask you this. I cameo in is his it, dreams. Isn't that the way it goes down? Isn't that the way it goes down in the, in the comic books? He quits and then Dar- um, uh, Nightwing takes over? Are you thinking of the wait? Wait, are you thinking of the Frank Miller Dark Knight Returns alternate reality, or in in the actual comics? Yes. No, he does not. He does not quit, and then Nightwing takes over. No, Robin becomes Nightwing. Batman is still Batman. Batman gets his back broken for a little bit, but then he comes back within a year. He fights to come back. He never volunteers to give up, which is something he does in that film twice. I'll tell you right and now. And something he never does in Batman I'll tell you a reason that Batman, Dark Knight Rises is better than Batman and Robin. Bane. Bane, Bane in Dark, uh, Batman and Robin is a, like, He's sidekick. terrible. He's terrible. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the fucking Dark Knight Rises version. He sounds like in that episode of The Simpsons where Bart beats up Itchy and Scratchy and he's in the costume and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he literally has the same voice Jerry has for his girlfriend's belly button. Like, <laughs> hello! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking la, la, la. Can't even understand him half the time. It's a waste of a great actor in Tom Hardy. <laughs> the, but you don't think, but you think Dark Knight Rises Bane is not as good as Batman and Robin Bane? I'll, I'll say that, I will say he's not as good as Poison Ivy. I think Uma Thurman is wonderful in this film. I think she's better than uh, you get shit. Everyone shits on Mr. Freeze and the ice puns and all of that. And look, he there are too many puns, um, (laughs) which I would have gladly written. I mean, even gets lazy at the end, and he just goes. Look, half the time he's a missing supervillain. The other half of the time he's an at midnight contestant. But however. (laughs) <laughs> Immediately dated <laughs> reference, uh, but however, Poison Ivy is is fantastic. That I is think a it's one of Uma statement. Thurman's best roles. She what? Fucking, <laughs> yeah. How many people? How many here have seen the movie? Have seen this movie? <laughs> Batman and Robin. Uma Thurman. Her whole thing is she's a villain that's plant based. That's awful. She's basically <laughs> the plot of the happening, but as a person in this movie. <laughs> Yes, as a guy who's never eaten a vegetable. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, easy, easy pot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kettle. <laughs> the chicken pot pie is called the Kettle Black. <laughs> but here's the thing, man. Me, me and Donnelly, if we hugged, it would just be a human double down sandwich. <laughs> No, but so she's many- awesome. She's like Shades of Eartha Kitt, uh, Julie Newmar. It's you can look at this as a modern take of Adam West, and she does the best of anyone in the film. <sighs> that is not yeah. true. She knows what it is, and she's having a blast. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Literally, the movie opens up, and the way they defeat they, the way they defeat Mister Freeze in the beginning of the movie is by playing a game of hockey. There's literally there's a, there's a yes. diamond there's a diamond what? he's trying to steal and the way they get it away from him is he has all these henchmen that are basically just hockey players <laughs> and then they play hockey really well to get the diamond away from Mr. Freeze. Well, I mean, first I off, know. I think it's nice that there's a criminal giving jobs to Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> who 
they're all as genuine. I think that genuine sounds I, great. <laughs> they shoot a museum guard. They're like, sorry about that. You could use my health care. Uh, no, they, yeah, they have uh, ice blades that pop out of their out of their shoes. Bat and Robin do also because they're always prepared for every situation. <laughs> By the way, Batman, more of a detective in this film than a lot of other films. What do you mean? Well, that, that he was ready for that situation, that he then figures out how to stop Mr. Freeze uh, freezing Gotham City. He learns how to defrost it and all of that. He learns that he has to be a team player and not just be alone because if he is, he's going to isolate everyone and have the solitude life that uh, he so was destined to have when his parents died. You're saying George Clooney goes on a journey in this film. Yeah. Here's this the thing. All I saw as was George good. Clooney staring... Staring at a bunch of old internet pages, like it was just, it was just him doing investigating on like the '97 internet. So it was like him looking at like an Angel Fire page about, about fucking about Mr. Freeze. It was 1997, and Clippy helped him a lot. Uh, <laughs> he didn't just save Gotham cities; he what? did it with Geo cities. Uh, no, another another great thing about this film, two awesome songs. Uh, the End is the Beginning is the End by Smashing Pumpkins, which is one of the best movie songs ever. Could have been a Bond song. It's that good. They remixed it, made a slow version for the Watchman soundtrack. And then R. Kelly, not a good person, but a great song with Gotham City. A city of justice, a city of love, a right. city of peace for everyone above. I'll negate what you just said. There's a cameo by Coolio. Oh, my God. I love Coolio. How else would you know that this was made in 1997? He's a human time stamp. This movie was not a fantastic voyage. (laughs) He's a human time stamp. He has a three-year shelf life. Now, look, I will admit a part of me liking this movie is that I saw it with my stepdad and had to learn to settle and enjoy a lot of things, (laughs) including him. Uh, <laughs> we do talk on the podcast a lot about how the circumstances around how you see a movie really affect absolutely how you feel about it. Yeah, and I think that Snyder offers nothing at all. It's mean, it's disgusting, it's ugly, and it's you know uh, indicative of the world we live in now. And Joel Schumacher was at least... Even if you thought he failed, was attempting to give you hope and joy. Uh. Zack Snyder is proof that some people want to watch the world burn. (laughs) And Joel Schumacher offers proof that you can warm the heart. You you saw a completely different movie than I saw. It's crazy. Also... Uh, Coolio's in it, and then there's a scene in the beginning, or in the middle of it, where uh, Mr. Freeze gets the gun knocked out of his hand, and they just show it on the ground, and his line after that is, get the gun! <laughs> Jesse Ventura is in this Jesse movie in as it. a prison guard. And he can't, he's awesome. He's such awesome. a bad actor. He can't even look. He can, he's looking at I, Poison Ivy, and even he's bad acting even looking at Poison Ivy. <laughs> I would looking say, at it like she's a milkshake. It's insane. I would say in the next year after this film came out, when the people of Minnesota were deciding to <laughs> vote, they were like, well, which one of these two candidates was in Batman and Robin? And that's how he became governor. <laughs> that's what they did? They just picked that? I think so. Also, there's another a plot line in this where, where Arthur Arthur is uh, – Alfred. Alfred, sorry. Uh, Alfred, I'm out of You it. can't Hot hate lights. what you don't understand. <laughs> Alfred is sick and he's dying. Yes. So they have these shots of Alfred where he says something normal to Bruce Wayne and then he goes to the corner and he goes, ah, ah, and he just acts really pained and you're like, oh, something's wrong with Alfred. And then you find out later that he has something called McGregor Syndrome. Which just sounds like a really made-up disease. Which is the name of the company that made my basketball when I was eight years old. <laughs> McGregor used to be a sports company back in the day. I'm dating myself, but like then sixty years ago. Sixty years ago. Uh, so, who so, will mourn the McGregor factory <laughs> when it closed after that church fire? Tidy, 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 tie. There's a whole plot line. What do you think about the plot line? With Al- why is there a plot line where Alfred is dying? Because I'll you have to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because it shows how much that 
Batman cares about the people around him and that he can't be selfish all the time. And Alfred is the closest he has to a dad. Oh, now you have like these fucking emotional answers. Honestly, this that are is fucking like... killing. <laughs> I feel like this might be my new well, favorite movie. <laughs> I feel like every time you speak, it's like an episode of Full House. Every time, Mike, did you see Moana? Moana, make, make way, way, make way. way. Moana, it's time you knew the village of Matanu is all you need. <laughs> The song, I, I'm literally so tearing good. up. The song Where You Are made me realize that I could leave New York and become a professional writer in Los Angeles. Thank you! Yet he did. I had been here for 10 years oh, and Anna. knew it was time to leave the island. Is, is there oh. Is there a 14 year old girl inside Mike right now? That's the thing. Just this working movie levers? Spans. I saw Katy Perry so in meaningful. concert two weeks ago and it was <laughs> fucking incredible. <laughs> She made me feel like a plastic bag drifting in the wind, <laughs> wanting to start again. We really got to get the Moana song queued up. How about this? So can you ex- good. Can you Rachel explain- House as the grandma is so incredible in that movie. The grandma. Back to Batman and Robin. Can you explain how did George Clooney survive? Coco was better movie? though. How'd you uh, oh my God, I loved Coco. Coco's so fucking awesome. But it was a better. But I loved it. Yeah, it was. The Remember Me song at the end was better than her becoming a turtle. Oh, my God. Oh my Get God. out. Come on. <laughs> I feel like I'm... I don't even know where I am right now. <laughs> Moana In the mind of like a 14-year-old girl. <laughs> we established that. How did Clo- George Clooney survive this movie? That's what I want to know. He literally has nipples on his suit, and they make reference to the nipples in the movie. Now, first off, the nipples were introduced in Batman Forever. So that's another thing about this film that people attack it for. Oh, it did this and it did that. A lot of this was established in Batman Forever. And here's the thing, too. 52-year-old gay men had never had a superhero movie made exclusively for them. <laughs> and this film rectified it. They're like, I like the mythos of heroes. Why isn't there a character named Gossip Gertie? <laughs> Boom. You're welcome. There is. It's very. It's a very campy. She's like almost like the narrator of it or whatever. They show up and she's like the gossip person of the town. It's almost set up like Gotham. The other thing that sucks about this movie is that they're never in Gotham. All they do is shoot to like these B-roll of Gotham getting frozen or unfrozen. There's not them walking. They're not walking around Gotham ever in this movie. Yeah, the whole thing takes place in Gotham. They don't go anywhere else. Outside of South America when Pamela Isley becomes Poison Ivy. Is Gotham just like a city? It's like city. Yeah. Or Kelly wrote a song about it that is in the soundtrack of the film. (laughs) We all need it. Can't live without it. it Gotham City, city, city. But for all the movies, it's just just the city where these things take place. Yeah. Yes. All right. I just always kind of wondered. What the fuck? This seems like an appropriate time to find that out. Where have you been for 30 years? This is crazy. You don't know Anything about this Watching stuff? Watching musicals. <laughs> <laughs> like the island Moana lives on, that's like Gotham, but it's a city. Right. The island of Tafiti. Tafi- <laughs> Shut the he fuck knows. up, Mike. He knows. And one time I did the opening monologue, which I could have brought here tonight, but I spared you. The opening monologue of Moana? Yeah, it's really good. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> Sorry to bring it back to Moana again. I didn't mean to. But I, I, I feel I, like I Sean is going to start his done. own podcast during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to be called, What About Me? <laughs> <laughs> also, there's a line uh, that George Clooney says in this movie when he's talking about Mr. Freeze's life. Because Mr. Freeze was like a scientist, and he was trying to find a cure for his wife's McGregor's disease. <laughs> <laughs> and then at one point, when George Clooney is doing the exposition, there's so much exposition in this movie, it's insane. <laughs> constantly, people are like, that's when my dad died, and I tried to fight crime. Like that's, They're just doing that constantly in this movie. And then when he's talking to Mr. Freeze, George Clooney goes, and here's where things went north. <laughs> That's that a alone. great line. No, it's not. <laughs> That's an awesome no, line. That line alone is why he cannot be defending this movie. <laughs> so do this. We do. We usually do this okay. to, to finish it off. Give us three reasons that we really haven't talked about yet. I know you can do it because you're amazing at this. Three reasons why you, somebody should watch this, but why Farrah Brook should watch this movie and not watch Moana for a 15th time. 
Because of the fact that now all of the comic book movies are made in a studio assembly line, and this is one person's true vision of what a superhero should be, and we don't get that anymore. Fuck, that's a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, he's so good at this I also like that you said three reasons when I gave 49 already. <laughs> Well, I we do that at the end of the podcast. I, okay, I wish we always more. had a live audience. You to can repeat them. them. Go ahead. You <laughs> can repeat fun. reasons you said already. No, um, I would. I would also say another another reason. Um, yeah, the soundtrack is is great. Okay, it's fucking awesome. It's probably. I'm gonna say the end is the beginning. Is the end is a better song than any individual song that Prince did in the first Batman soundtrack. I think it's that good. Oh, wow. Now you you done fucked up now, Mike. <laughs> You can't fuck with Prince in Brooklyn, baby. Dude, how shitty was that scene in the first Batman when Joker's in the museum with a bunch of guys who look like your dad's friends? <laughs> just ruining art when they look like the only people who would buy that art. <laughs> What's the name of the party man is the name of the song, yeah. right? Party man. Yeah, the end is the beginning party is the man. end is better than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, better, end, it's better, better than Bat Dance. I said it. I'll die on it. I'll die on it. He's yeah. like, kill me now. <laughs> All right, do you have one more reason you want to say before we go? Yeah, one more reason that I would say is that I think that women are horribly underrepresented in comic book films and that you have Uma Thurman owning it the entire time and giving a great performance. And outside of Kate Blanchett as Hela, we haven't really had that many good, strong female antagonists in superhero films. Whoa, nobody's clapping for that. That's great. Yeah, give it up for that. What about... Alicia Silverstone as the badass motorcycle Batgirl. I gave you three reasons already. <laughs> oh, that's his Achilles heel. <laughs> He's like, fuck Alicia Silverstone. Yeah, well, Mike, thank you so much for doing it. Give it for Mike Lawrence, thank everybody. You. Yes. Farrah Brooke, hold on. Well, Farrah, will you see the movie? Oh. Well, yeah, the honestly, that was one of the most convincing arguments. <laughs> I'm convinced I could potentially like this more than Moana. Unlikely, but... Yes, I will definitely be visiting, giving this film a visit. Whoa! Give it up for that. I will everybody. watch this. I, I will, will watch just this. say this about this movie: it has everything of a Broadway musical, except they don't break out in the song. <laughs> Except yes, there's a me. scene where Mr. Freeze and his henchmen break out in a song, <laughs> and it's awesome. <laughs> what? Are there's you a scene. Serious? No, Everything. he's trying. They're singing like a uh, from an old like uh, the Heat Miser from the Rankin Bass. Mr. Santa Claus is coming to town. Yes, uh, and he's going, TV special. And it's just it's Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Iceman makeup going. Fr- Mr. Freeze makeup going. Sing, <laughs> sing. And, and, and then they do. Saying, yeah. I'm Mr. Cold Miser. <laughs> It's I the worst think thing this ever. movie sounds like a big accomplishment of an artist and a really wonderful journey. If someone jizzed on a comic book <laughs> panel and then it came to life, it would be this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again. Mike Lawrence, everybody. Hey, Mike. You guys, that is the show. Did you guys have a good time? What do you say? Thank you so much, Farrah. Did you have a blast? You had a blast. Are you pl- play the song? You're playing the Defend Your Movie song <laughs> over your phone, or which song? Is this the Moana song? Guys, thank you so, so much, much for coming to our show. <laughs> we love you. We want to thank Union Hall for putting us up. Showbiz Studios, where we record. Check out the podcast. We're on iTunes. Check We're on out. all that stuff. Why not? You guys, and give it up for yourselves for coming out, everybody. Thank you thank so much. You. Well, this is going to air. We're going to put this online like on Saturday if you want to hear it, but you saw it live, so fuck it. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Bye-bye.